What's up everybody? This is Missy with Lansing Hoops and this is week two of our On Body Core Challenge. This week I'm going to be showing you some neck hooping tips that will take you from feeling a little bit concerned about making the hoop go around your neck to being incredibly comfortable. Okay, so last week we talked about the three rules of hoop piece and how they apply to waist hooping. Remember, the three rules of hoop piece are P, pulse, or move with purpose. E, take it easy. The hoop is like an extension of your body, so whatever you're doing with your body, the hoop will be doing that too. And ACE, keep your abs and your core engaged. So this week, when we wind up and we put our hoop on our neck, here are the things that you need to know. First of all, when you're getting started, hooping on your neck can be a little bit sensitive and sometimes it can make your neck hurt. So I recommend getting a lighter weight dance hoop or a child's beginner hoop that you can get from any department store or the dollar store. Remember, most of the time people hoop in the opposite direction of their dominant hand. I'm left-handed, so I normally hoop to the right. A lot of my right-handed friends hoop to the left. So, if you're not sure which way to make your hoop go, put it on your neck, wind up toward your dominant hand, and push towards the second hand. Now, when you're hooping on your neck, remember the third rule of hoop piece is to keep your abs and your core engaged. In this instance, our neck is part of our core. So when you put your hoop on your neck, if you're not flexing, if you're not firm in the muscles in your neck, the hoop will flap all around and hit you in the face, or fall down to your shoulders, or tilt like this. So what you wanna do is work on tightening or flexing the muscles in your neck, just like this. Might make you feel kind of silly, but learning how to flex those muscles and move with the hoop will help you keep the momentum of the hoop going. So, with our hoop on our neck, we will wind up towards our dominant hand. Remember, the first rule of hoop piece is to pulse. So in this instance, we're pushing our neck forward or side to side, but we're not making big circles with our neck because that will create too much movement and the hoop will fall. So moving with purpose creates this sort of Mario turtle effect that we'll be using with our neck. Put the hoop on, wind up, and push. Or move with purpose. Now you can see the second rule of hoop piece is to take it easy. And you can tell that I'm taking it easy because there's very little movement in my body. A slight movement in my ankles and my knees and into my shoulders. But the biggest movement that we have here is in my neck, and that's because I'm hooping on my neck. Remember, I'm only moving where I want the hoop to move and nowhere else, taking it easy. Keeping my back straight, up and down. I'm pushing. If the hoop starts to wobble a little bit, remember, flex those muscles in your neck and be just a little bit more firm when you push. If you move faster, you can make the hoop go faster. And if you push slowly, you can slow down the hoop. Remember, you're always moving only where you want the hoop to move and nowhere else in a pushing or a pulsing motion. Take it easy and keep your abs and your core engaged. Remember, this can create some sensitivities in your neck. So only practice for a few minutes at a time when you're first getting started so that you don't create any bruising on the sides or any tenderness. If it starts to hurt, give yourself a break. And always remember the three rules of hoop piece. P, move with purpose. E, 
take it easy, and ACE, keep your abs and your core engaged. Hope these tips for neck hooping helped you. If you have any questions, send me an email to missy at lansinghoops.com or hit me up in the comments and I'll answer below. If you're not already signed up for our core challenge, you can do that today at lansinghoops.com slash core challenge. We'll see you next time.